Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is going to be on thyroid function and TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. So let's kind of recap here. What is TSH? TSH is a pituitary or brain hormone. TSH screams down to the thyroid gland to make some thyroid hormone. So this is your thyroid gland here. TSH screams down and says, make some thyroid hormone, and the thyroid pops out some T4, which is inactivated thyroid hormone. There's a cascade of T4, which is inactive, getting it converted to active T3. So in that process, though, we look at, is it the best way to look at a brain hormone, a pituitary hormone, and correlate that to thyroid function? Well, the research is actually starting to catch up. There was a study back in 2000 called the Colorado uh, Prevalence Study on, on Thyroid Conditions. And what they found that just using TSH testing alone, there were millions of people that were not being detected as having thyroid issues. And one of the first symptoms that we'll see of having thyroid issues is elevated cholesterol. I mean, with all the statins marketed in the news, potentially a lot of people with elevated cholesterol or lipids that are abnormal could be from thyroid dysfunction. Also, the research is talking about TSH, that the brain being more sensitive to thyroid hormone, we may put people on thyroid hormone, but we may, may not get the right dosage as well. So TSH for detection, but also TSH as a means of figuring out, you know, do you have the optimal amount of thyroid hormone? And a lot of times that's what's used. And the TSH, the brain's more sensitive, so you may not have enough thyroid hormone for the thyroid gland in the periphery, but the brain may be happy. So let's break down a couple of things and uh, kind of go over the main ways in which the thyroid gland dysfunctions. So again, when we look at our thyroid tissue, this is our thyroid gland right here. It sits, so if you find your Adam's apple, so for me it's right here, it's just below the Adam's apple and just lateral of that. So it would be right in this area here and you can push side to side to feel it. So again, what these little weapons are, I have my, my nimchucks and the Chinese star and the, um, the, the sword here, all these things are stuck in the thyroid gland. That is basically my analogy of an autoimmune thyroid condition. These conditions are known as Hashimoto's, uh, or it could even be Graves' disease, and this is basically causing the thyroid gland trauma. And what happens is this, little thyroid water droplets or thyroid hormone literally comes right out of the thyroid gland. These little follicles here rupture, thyroid hormone comes out. And what happens is you may go through stages of hyperthyroid symptoms where you're heart's pounding, you're feeling a little jittery, your eyes may even start to bulge a little bit, uh, things of that nature, and then at some point you may drop out of that because your thyroid's starting to fatigue because of the autoimmune attack. And studies show between 50 to 90% of people's thyroid conditions are autoimmune in nature. And I have an autoimmune thyroid condition myself, so I'm really on top of you know, the, the current research and what needs to be done to help keep that inflammation at bay. So again, 50 to 90%, 50 to 90% of research is showing that thyroid conditions are autoimmune. That's really important because that's the majority, right? So when we look at a thyroid condition here, if we're looking at TSH, one of the really important things is TSH starts getting higher the more your thyroid gland isn't doing what it's supposed to do, right? You think of the kid in the corner with his headphones on, you really have to yell louder to finally get him to understand what you're saying. So think of the TSH as just you yelling at someone that just can't quite hear you because they got something in their ear. So if the TSH goes up, imagine symptoms starting to occur here. So symptoms occur. And it may take literally years before a diagnosis of TSH being over 4.5 occurs. So it could take literally up to 10 years for that even to be detected. So all this lost time, so what are we gonna do? Well, one simple thing is you can just look and see you do have, do you have thyroid symptoms? I did a couple of videos on this, but a couple of them are gonna be lower temperature, fatigue, maybe even like fibromyalgia or um, muscle soreness-like symptoms, outer third of the eyebrow thinning, constipation, thinning of your fingernails, uh, hair loss on top of the head, these can be all thyroid symptoms. So again, TSH is gonna to start to raise as our thyroid starts to dysfunction. What's the main cause of that? We link back over, it's the autoimmune thyroid condition. Hashimoto's typically where we're having either TPO antibodies or antithyroglobulin antibodies. And the research is starting to show that TSH is just not picking up these, these, um, these people. And that's just a shame. 
So now let's kind of go down to the lab range. How is this range even met? Well, it's different depending on parts of the country you go. If you go in Alabama, if I run tests from patients that are in Alabama, we'll see the TSH up to 5.5 as normal. You go to California, it's 4.5, so it changes based upon the population. So if you are a hypothyroid person diagnosed in Alabama and moved to California, miraculously you are cured. If only if that were easy. If only if it were that easy, right? So if we look at lab ranges here, how a lab range is created is 95% of the population fits in that bell curve. Two and a half on the, on the low side, two and a half on the high side. The problem is as the population gets sicker and sicker and sicker, what happens to this lab range? It actually gets wider and wider and wider, which is really, really sad. So you're going to get stuck in that range and you'll never get picked up. So our goal is to kind of look at things more sensitively. So we're looking at a more narrow range so we can see if a person is starting to go in that direction. If you're running towards the cliff and you're running at 15 miles per hour heading in that direction, well, chances are you're eventually going to fall off that cliff soon enough. So we want to just see which direction are you heading in so we can prevent that, that fall from occurring. So again, more of a, a narrow range to help pick you up. And again, TSH research shows once it starts going over 2.5, that's potentially uh, a thyroid condition starting to predispose because the volume is starting to increase a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, which is showing the gland isn't quite responding could be due to nutritional issues, it could be due to stress, adrenal fatigue, it could be due to gut issues or chronic infections. Again, we talked about 50 to 90% of thyroid conditions being autoimmune in nature, and we know the literature is ripe with a strong infection connection when it comes to these autoimmune conditions. When I say infection connection, this could be conditions like Lyme disease. This could be conditions like Yersinia enterocolitica. These are parasite infections. It could be things like H. pylori or Epstein-Barr conditions. And again, these can confuse the immune system and cause the immune system to start choosing the wrong invader or the wrong tissue to attack. So again, we really want to figure out what's driving your autoimmune condition. Is it just TSH starting to elevate by itself without an autoimmune condition? Is there an autoimmune condition and what infection is driving it? So I hope from this video you were able to grasp that TSH is not the be all and end all. You understand that TSH, once it goes above 2 to 2.5, it's already, you're starting to walk in that direction of a potential thyroid condition. So check out some of my other videos. I go into more details of how you can assess if you're starting to walk down that path outside of just lab tests. And if you're having um, thyroid issues and you want to get assessed and figure out if you're walking on that path and you want to start making changes now to prevent and or correct the underlying cause, feel free and reach out and grab my information below the video. Feel free and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll be getting you more great information just your way. Thanks. This is Dr. Justin signing off.